Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the news from the School of Mathematics at Catholic University. We want to talk about real-time sufficient numerical reduction via principal list squares of all vector machines, which in joint work with Wilson Down from Temple University and Sun Chun Ching from Korea University. Um, a brief introduction on sufficient numerical reduction, what is principal list squares of all vector machines and how we can use it for real-time sufficient numerical reduction. Well, since sufficient dimensional reduction, we are trying to identify a small number of directions to replace the pin dimensional effect of vector x without losing information on the conditional distribution of y given x. As you can see, we, we can say this as trying to estimate the matrix beta, a p by d matrix beta, uh, where d is less than or equal to p, without, uh, such that this conditional independent model is true y independent of x given beta transpose x. We can put the identity matrix here instead of beta, but then we don't have dimensional reduction. So if d is less than p, dimensional reduction is achieved. Our effort is to find the one that minimizes d, the beta that minimizes d, and such beta, the columns of such beta, is uh, a sponge space that is called the central subspace and we denote it with this script as y given x. Uh, some earlier methodologies, slice inverse regression, which we will discuss in a bit, say those are inverse me moment methods that are very quick, but not as accurate as other methods. Uh, for example, pre-liberation and directions, control regression, uh, minimum average various estimation with the local method, it needs less assumptions, but it's computationally much more expensive. Also recently, there is this SVN-based methodology, principal support vector machines. I left them in 2011, the few extensions that we are working on the last few years. Those, again, they are more accurate, but they are computationally more expensive because in support vector machine, we have to estimate, a, um, we have to solve a quadratic programming optimization problem. This is a toy example on slicing verification where we have 100 data points from standard normal distribution. Y depends only on one of the two x's, x1, we have an error. And then we discretize y by using four slices, 25 points each. And this is, and then we project the points on the x1, x2 plane. And you see that these 25 black points are the ones with lower response uh, value y, these green points, the one with the higher response value y. And as you can see, there are 25 circles and one cross, the one crosses the mean of each slice. If you connect this mean with the overall mean, you get this zero, zero, you get a line that is parallel to x1, which is the variable that affects our response variable. So this is roughly how slice inverse regression works without showing any maths, essentially. Uh, support vector machines now, what uh, what they do is that since we are discretizing Y and it seems like you can use classification methods to um, find the hyperplane that separates the, the slices. Uh, if you know how support vector machine works, you will see that this is, if you try and put a hyperplane between the black and the red points, for example, this line is going to be parallel to X2. But then the normal vector of that line is going to be the one being parallel to x1. And that's what principal support vector machine says. It says, okay, use this discrete version of y to construct support vector machines, take the normal vectors, and these normal vectors are going to help you to estimate the central subspace. Now, as we said before, support vector machines, they need to solve quadratic optimization problems. So they are computationally expensive. So uh, to avoid that, uh, Sugens and his collaborator in 1999 proposed the least square support vector machines, which shows essentially this, uh, solves this optimization problem. As you can see, this is a square here, so you can solve it analytically. The analytic solution is this one here, very simple to use. There is one modification that we did here. We added this sigma that doesn't exist in the least square support vector machine. And this is because in the um, 
sufficient dimensional reduction framework. This allow us to do uh, linear and non-linear sufficient dimensional image unified framework. Um, we have these three models, uh, which I'm going to run simulations and to show that the least squares approach works better than the 2011 paper by Lee Arthur Mundlin, uh, which is a classic principal support vector machine approach. As you can see, this is the average of 100 uh, simulations, and this is a standard error. We compare the principal support vector machine and the principal least squares support vector machine, as we call the modification of least squares in the sufficient dimensional reduction framework. Um, and you can see that always it performs better as closer to zero is better in this case for all three models, all different values of P. Now, the online SDR or real time sufficient dimensional reduction, it's a very recent uh, um, uh, um, let's say people have shown interest very recently. Uh, titled 2020 in general of machine learning research, so two different algorithms how to transform slicing value creation to online slicing value creation. One approach is in gradient design, and the other is the perturbation methods. Both are approximate solutions, and after doing an initial estimate on, on the data that is available, then they do estimate of new data that come in one by one, it's observation. Okay. Our approach is slightly different. First of all, we use the support vector machine framework, but also we have an analytic solution. We are allowed to do a batch update. So if uh, 1,000 new data come in, instead of doing it one by one, we can do all 1,000 points at the same time. And also if we find out that some of the previous observations were erroneously recorded or used the wrong instrument or something, then you can remove it from the estimation. So you can remove essentially the influence of those wrongly uh, uh, points. There is some math behind it, how you can transform uh, these special per vector machines to um, uh, real time, these special per vector machines. The idea is that this, the subscript Ws denotes the whole data old and new data. The end subscript denotes the new data and then all subscript of the old data essentially. So the whole data you can put it together as the old and new data. Okay. The solution to the original data is this one here. The solution to the whole data is this one here, which is exactly the same. We just add the subscript W and we change them to n plus n essentially. The good thing is that this one now we can write it as this thing, which is the old solution on the old data, plus this matrix and this vector here, which this matrix depends on the old data and this vector on the new data. And then we have this matrix S here, which is this formula here. I is the identity matrix. A depends on the old data and B depends on the new data. So essentially, it's very clear separation which separate the effect of the old and new data. Okay, and we can do that in sufficient dimensional reduction if we have essentially uh, eight slices. You have to do this eight minus one times. The good thing is that on all different hyperplanes that you estimate, the matrix A is the same, so you don't have to calculate it multiple times. So as long as you know matrix A, you can update the new estimates of the. Uh, um, normal vectors essentially of the separated hyperplanes. Um, as you can see here, this uh, real-time experiment, we compare the least square support vector machines with online self, the uh, red and black points, and we can see that the least square support vector machine is always, uh, it's age essentially better. What do we do is that we have an initial estimate of 100 data, and then we have 900 new points that we update one by one in both algorithms. Although this question to embed that did, we decided to read one by one so that we can show this comparison here. And you can see that P cross 10, 20, and 30, it's always lower for this question for vector machine than online services. Okay, model two and model three on the models we have. 
previously, this computational time, this plot is the zoom of this plot. You can see here the y-axis goes from 0 to 10 and instead of 0 to 300. Okay, so it's this uh, bottom of the plot here essentially because I want you to see how uh, everything behaves. The red lines, we, we have four different pieces, 10, 20, 50, and 100. The red lines are for the least square support vector machine. You can see linear increase as new data coming. Uh, there is linear increase in the computational time. For online cell, there is quadratic increase. For, uh, sorry, for the classic cell, quadratic increase is low. For online cell, it's linear again, but it's much more time consuming than the least square support vector machine because this approximation is not an exact analytic solution. Some real data analysis with using the bike sharing data of the UC Irvine data set. Um, as you can see, it's a daily usage of 2011-2012. We keep 500 days because we remove holidays and weekends. Casual users is a response and we have three predictors, temperature, humidity, wind speed. We use the methods uh, that uses the whole data, 500 days. This is the estimates we get for the central substrates. If you use online cell in real time, the square support vector machine. Um, what we do, we use the first 100 days and then we update one by one. The rest 400 and this is the final update for the square support vector machine. This is the final update for online cell. You see the four of them are very close. This one is a bit off. And also what you can do with least square support vector machine because you cannot then remove data. You can have this moving window update where we took 20 observations at the beginning and then we added one day and we removed the oldest day and we have this moving window of, of estimating. This shows the temperature, the seasonality of the temperature and this shows the temperature coefficient. You can see that the coefficient of the temperature is very significant on when you have extremes on the temperature. When it's low, high, low, high, low, those five points, one, two, three, four, five. And when you're in the middle, you get very low effect of the temperature coefficient. So you can capture this seasonality essentially. Conclusions, computationally faster, estimates an algorithm much better than a VM-based algorithm. Uh, you can do real time, but I haven't discussed, as far as the area, I haven't discussed it. Uh, you can do distributed approach, I haven't discussed this. Outlier detection, I haven't discussed it. We are still looking for a way to do non-linear sufficient dimensional reduction using this framework and some key references. Thank you for listening. Um,